Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. The subject of today's video, well, it's a video for someone that's asked for a very specific uh, subject about decision making. Is there some statistical way of making decision making, I suppose? So I'm going to I'm going to pass on my tool for uh, relatively large decision making inside businesses. Uh, but before we do that, just a reminder: my new book. Statistical Process Control for Small Batch Production. You can get it, it's just released this week. You can get this from lulu.com. Um, you can also get my Green Belt, Black Belt uh, book, How to Turn Your Black Belt Skills into Money-Making Capability. That's exactly what you want to be doing. You should be saving piles of money for your employer drink tea and read the paper. There's hardly any mathematics in this book. This is all about how to make money. And finally, if you want to know more about design of experiments and you want to get good world class at design of experiments, we've got design of experiments for 21st century engineers. It would be fantastic to receive your support. If you go and buy one of these books now, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. So let's talk about the request that I've had, comment on a video. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to title Decision Analysis. Now I'm going to be honest with you and say that this comes from an organisation known as Kepner Trago. So if you want to know more about, about this, you can get taught this officially by uh, people from the KT organization. But somebody wanted to know about how to make decisions and I, I have the decision analysis technique that I sometimes use. It's rare, it would, this would be for large, so this would be for large decision making. I mean, that's what I'm gonna call it large decisions so this would be things like you're going to relay out an, a large area of your factory you have two options or three options and you're trying to decide which one of the three options is the best solution for your factory okay so it's that sort of large decision making situation that we're that we're talking about. Now what we're going to use it as an example, I'm, I'm just going to use an example of, um, just to keep it very simple, buying a second hand car. Okay, so that's the, the, the decision that we're going to make and um, one of the things to say about what we're about to do is really you should do this before you even start the process. All right, so this should be something that you do before you even start the process. And the first thing you should do is identify musts and wants. Musts are very simple. They are yes, no things. If the, if the answer is no, so if the feature is not present and the answer is no, then that particular solution cannot be the answer to your problem, cannot be the answer to your decision. So musts are things that you must have. So let's think about uh, a car for example, uh, musts. I'm gonna say it must be green it's my favorite color and it must have four doors okay so they're two musts so when I go and find a second-hand car if it's not green or it's only got two doors I'm afraid I just cross it off the list it can't be one of my options then what you've got is the wants now the wants are going to be things that you can actually score potentially. So a car for instance, you could be talking about how economical a car is. Maybe you would like it to go at 60 miles to the gallon. So one of your wants 
is 60 miles to the gallon. And then when you've got car one and car two, maybe car one, maybe just 62 to the gallon. But this one only does 54. Now, of course, we can give it a score. Whilst we want the 60 miles to the gallon, it's close, it's not quite right, but we can now score the solution against that criteria. So what we what we do is just create a little bit of space here. So we list L1. So uh, I want it to go at 60 miles to the gallon. I want two meters cubed in the boot. Uh, what else do I want? Uh, so I think. Uh, I want it to be uh, less than less than five hundred pound for the annual service. Okay, so I, I've just I've just got those three. Let's say I've got those three ones. Now what I can do is I can give them a score before I start. So how important are they? So I could say that the 60 mile an hour is something that's absolutely crucial to me because of the amount of miles that I drive every year. So I'm going to give that a weight of 10. The boot, also quite important, not an absolute crucial item now. I'm going to give it a weight of 8. And the less than 500 pound for the service charge, not so important, I'm gonna give it a weight of six. Now what you would have is you would have all these criteria. So you give them a weighting before you start. Now the reason why you wanna do this before you start, it stops you getting biased. So if, there's a, if there was a solution that you personally really wanted, then you're gonna have a tendency to weight the features to choose that particular car. So you do this before you start, and then that removes the bias, okay? Then what we do is we go out and let's say we find three cars. So uh, let's say I find a Ferrari F40, I find a Fiesta, uh, and I find a Corsa. Let's say they're the they're the three cars that I found. Now, of course, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply the musts. So, must be green, must have four doors. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cross the Ferrari F40 out, because, of course, we all know the Ferrari's gonna be red, and it's only gonna have two doors. So, because of the must requirement, if it's not present, it can't be part of the solution. So I'm afraid the Ferrari is knocked out in round one. Then what we do is we look at the, the features on the Fiesta and the Corsa. So let's have a look. Maybe the MPG for the Fiesta is 62, for the Corsa um, is uh, 71 MPG, uh, the boot, uh, let's say the boot here on the Fiesta, 1.8, Corsa, 1.7, less than 500 pounds on the service charge annually. Uh, let's say that the Fiesta is uh, 480, Corsa is going to cost me a little bit more, maybe because of the parts cost or maybe because of the service interval perhaps. So, so now I've got my three, got my three features scored against the. Okay. Now then, what we're always going, what we're going to do now is give these a score. Now the best result always gets a ten. So the Corsa here is going to get ten for the miles per gallon, and we're going to give this. A relative score against it. Now to be fair it's still meeting our criteria so I'm gonna just give it a 9 there for on the Fiesta. The boot size. Now the best the best car 
is the Fiesta, so it gets a 10. This one's a little bit lower. I don't like 1.7, it's getting too small for me, so I'm going to give it an 8 there. Then you go less than £500 on the servicing, brilliant. The Fiesta scores 10. Uh, the Corsa, not doing so well. Now what we're going to do is a very simple thing. We're just going to multiply the weighting by the score. So for this one, for instance, the Fiesta is going to score 90. It's going to score 80, because it's 10 times 8. 10 times 6, 60. So if I add that up, what do I get? I get uh, 170. I get 230 for the Fiesta. For the Corsa, what do I get? 10 times 10 is 100. 64, so I get 100. I get 64. 8, 6, 8, so 48. Come on, made it a bit more difficult to add this one up. So what have I got? Uh, 2, 10, 11. On there, 2, 1, 2. What's my decision? I'm going to buy the Fiesta. And that is decision analysis that kept the tray go away. The most important feature of this is to do the musts and the wants before you start. And the other point is, if one of your decision, if one of your choices fails to meet the must, it has to go. You have to strike it through. But do this before you start, that will remove the bias. And then you can evaluate whatever it is you're trying to understand. That's decision analysis using Kepner Trago. Now if you want to contact Kepner Trago, they, you, they do other things apart from decision analysis. They do situation appraisal. Some of the lads when I worked at Sony had been trained in situation appraisal. And I have to be honest, they were superb at quickly dealing with instantaneous problems that used to come up on the production line. They, they'd been taught a certain technique that got them to their, their, their decision and their rectification action as fast as possible. So situation appraisal, I was very, very impressed with, with KT. Decision analysis, another one. There are some other categories that they work on as well. So if you're really interested in this, maybe speak to the guys from Kepner Trago. But if you just want to use decision analysis, musts and wants, give them a weighting, give them a score, add up the score, your decision is made.